Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 594. Today we're going to take a look at Downforce. Now this is coming out from Restoration Games, who, as the name implies, have restored this game from a previous edition called, uh, well there's a few editions, Daytona 500, uh, Top Race, and some others. And that's originally a Wolfgang Kramer design, who has done uh, lots of games. If you're familiar with kind of the Euro game scene, he has been, had his hand in several Spiel des Jahres nominees and winners. Uh, now, this has been restored, as the name implies, by Rob Davio and the rest of the folks at the Restoration Games team. Uh, it is, if I had to sort of give it sort of what is it like, it's kind of like Camel Up or maybe Winter Circle, more closely to that, where you are racing cars around a track, but you don't necessarily control a car but you may own a car or may have even bet on a car or bet on some various different cars. So let's jump into the mechanics and then I will tell you what I think of it. Okay, so here is everything that you get in the box. And the first thing you're gonna do is choose a side of the board. This is a double-sided track here. I've just chosen this side here. Then you're gonna randomly take these cars and these are really cool little cars here. You're gonna take and then put them in these various uh, pole positions here to start the game. Then you're gonna shuffle up this giant deck here of cards and deal these out all to all the players. Uh, in a four or five player game, you might have some cards left over, but these are cards that players will be playing during the course of the game to move all the various different cards. So if I played this one here, I would move the blue card six spaces, the orange card four, and then a wild two, and then a yellow one. Now the wild has to be different than all the other cards that are depicted on the card. And there's a whole variety of these, like this is just a wild five. This will move all the cars, just the one card, green, five spaces, and so on. So you'll deal these out to all the players. And then the game comes with this giant pad here of these little uh, scoring sheets here. So I've got one here. So players will have these. And you can see here now, players are going, going to now, before we race, bid on the various different cars. So we're gonna shuffle up here this little small deck of cards here. Now these are all eight movements. So you can see that will move red eight, that'll move green eight. So you're gonna shuffle these up. Let's just do this one here. And that's gonna be blue eight. So we're gonna find here the tile, the blue tile. And so that is going to be there. You're gonna have the eight. And then if you want to or not, I would, I would recommend playing with this, but you don't have to maybe for your first game, you get these special powers. So you're gonna shuffle up a power here to go along with that. And so this one says strategic. If you play a speed card with all six colors, you may actually ignore one color on it. So this is gonna go along with that. Now, remember now, everybody's gonna look at their hand and say, okay, I've got a lot of maybe, I can move a lot of black or whatever. I got a lot of wilds and such. So at that point, players are then again going to bid on the blue card. The bidding in this game is really simple, it's really cool. So I'm just gonna take some cards here, and let's say I really wanted blue. I'd find a card that had blue on it. Now I don't have a lot of cards with blue on it, so I maybe wouldn't bid on it, but let's say, uh, you know what, I'll try to do this, and because uh, you can actually win multiple cards. Someone's gonna bid two. So everybody's gonna take a card with blue, show it simultaneously, and then the highest number uh, with, that has a blue on there will bid that amount. So I've got a two, let's pretend that I won that, nobody really wanted blue. I would then take and mark down two next to blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that on here. So I've noted there that I've paid $2 million for blue. And then I'll take and add the blue eight to my hand. I'll get this power here. And then I will have the blue tile in front of me just to remember that I actually am the one that sort of owns blue or is invested in blue winning. So we're gonna bid off all the different colors, all the different powers. And like I said, uh, you can own multiple. You can't ever own more than three and you're at least gonna own one of these. Now you're gonna end up possibly with multiple powers. At that point, you're gonna choose and discard uh, all the powers except for one. Now let's just go through these real quickly here. It says, if you play a card with your car at the top of the card, you may move an additional space. It does not apply to wilds. And down here, determined. On any player's turn, if your car moved into only rectangular spaces and the straightaways here, then it, you may move it to additional spaces. And let's see here, unpredictable. When you play a card with a wild on it, you may use that wild for any color that is already on the card. On your turn, you may move the cards in reverse order. So if we played uh, like this card here, I could move green first, then red, then that. I don't think I said that earlier. You have to actually move them in this particular order here as you move them. And so let's talk about how you actually do move the cars because that is going to be very important. So let's say I went ahead and played this card here. Now you can see we got to move blue six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. 
You can also move it diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then I would do red five, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So we'll move all these up here, one, two, three, four for green, three for black, two for orange, and then one for yellow, like that. And so the next card that's played randomly here, let's say we did this one here. Now this is yellow first, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you can see they're blocking that. So next would be black, one, two, three, and then where would we go with four? You're gonna be blocked in. You're gonna have to stop there. So this is gonna act as a bottleneck. And there are various different uh, parts of the track here. Like you can see, this is a really big bottleneck right here. So you're gonna try to you know, play around that and that's gonna be part of now the other thing to keep in mind is these betting lines. So if we look down here, we can see a betting line. So as cars kind of move around and people get up and down the track here, once a car maybe passes this betting line, as soon as that happens at the end of that card play, then players will be able to then bid, or excuse me, bet on who they think is going to uh, be first. And so what's gonna happen is you've got three betting lines. We've got one here, uh, we've got another one down over here and this one here. So at three points during the race, uh, you're gonna be able to place a bet. And all you have to do, and there's no money or anything really involved, is you're just gonna go ahead and check this off. So maybe I'll say, I think yellow's gonna win. So I'll cross that off there. And then when they go around the second betting along and the third betting line, I'll say, well, it looks like blue might win. And I'm gonna maybe double down on yellow because they caught back up. So after the uh, this guy here finishes, then that player who owns that car will discard the rest of their hand, unless they have more than one car. If you've got more than one car, uh, then you can keep playing. Uh, but as they finish, you'll kind of put them in here, first, second, and third, and so on. Now once the cars have finished, we're gonna go ahead and see uh, what we got here. So we can see here, uh, blue was one of the ones that we bid on. So we're gonna go ahead and just circle down here the 12 million there because we've got that. Now if we had another car, let's say we actually owned yellow, we would get third place down there, we would circle the six. And then we're gonna look at the betting payouts here. Now yellow, we bet on that twice there, but you can see the earlier you get it correct, so yellow for getting third gets three million here because we bid on them earlier, and then one million uh, down here for three. And then we had picked blue in the second bet and so we would get first place there. So we see we could get second place and second place here and then first place there and then we're gonna add that up. So we've got 12 plus the betting total, which would be, let's see, 12, 14. And then we bid two on uh, the blue there. We didn't bid very much. So we'd get, uh, let's see, 26 minus two. So it'd be 24 and that would be our total. That would, and whoever has the most money there uh, wins the game. So that's it, very, very simple. There's a couple of different variants for like two players or maybe doing a beginning game uh, where you just try to get a car across without any bidding or anything. Maybe you can play that with kids or something like that. And then there's another uh, variant where maybe you play both sides of the track or you kind of see who finishes furthest down the finish line, stuff like that. Okay, so that's downforce. This game is awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm really surprised, honestly, how much I really like this game. It's just, it's, it's got so many elements working, but in such a simple streamlined kind of way, uh, it just really is, has kind of blown me away. Now, I'm really a big fan of Camel Up. If you watched you know, this channel at all, you know that Camel Up is one of my favorite games. Uh, so this is kind of like Camel Up, but with a little bit more control. Uh, so I think folks that maybe were kind of shady on Camel Up uh, will like this better because you know at the beginning of the game, you've got your hand of cards. You can see what you can move a lot of. Uh, you can maybe take a chance that even though, let's say you don't have a ton of yellow, you might have a big yellow. And yellow, you, you know it's out there, you know people are gonna have to move it. So you can bid on that, you don't wanna overbid, but you can try to snag you know, a, a second car and try to you know, get those extra points that way. So that's a very cool kind of interesting thing. And the bidding is just so super, super easy. You don't have to like figure out a whole bunch of stuff. And you know, like most games with bidding or loans or something like that, it's a big old nightmare. Uh, in terms of you know being an accessible game. And this is a simple, I'm like, eh, this is the card I showed. Okay, so I marked that on my sheet and it's gonna reduce my score by that amount at the end of the game. And I'll know at that point if I bid too much. Uh, and then of course you get you know the, the level eight card that allows you to, to move that one particular uh, situation maybe that you can get it around and maybe bottleneck the other guys. You can kind of warm it around. In terms of the gameplay itself, the timing of those cards can be pretty important. 
and that's going to kind of change up based on the number of players because there's going to be a lot of dynamics that are going to change if there's more players a lot more cars are going to move the board state's going to change a lot uh, but that's really fun when you can jam something up there and you force people to move your car if you get you know you got the black car and you're in that, that one lane kind of curve you got to move my car man to move it and you know you get shoot that up and then uh, you know that forces them to play a big card and it gets it you know, maybe halfway to the next turn you're like great now I can play it and get it around that turn uh, so that's really really fun and then I like that you can get kind of you know behind the eight ball with maybe the cars that you purchased at the beginning of the game or that you own but then the betting comes into play and then everybody has a chance to kind of just you know get a little bit of bonus money they can look at the race and how it shakes out they get to kind of reevaluate their hand in terms of you know what they can do to assist certain cars. And you're like, oh yeah, I know yellow's going to win now because I've got these other cards, and uh, and then you can do that. So again, it's like really really simple, and it's got those elements of you know some those real basic elements of some of those more complex games like the bidding and all that kind of thing and the hand management and kind of the multi-use card stuff because. Yeah, they all do the same thing, but they do, you know, they all kind of affect the game in a lot of different ways. So I highly recommend this game. It looks gorgeous. I love all of the, you know, the graphic design, everything has got kind of a very stark look to it. Uh, so I think it's going to be very inviting for kids and families to play because it's like, ooh, you know, these cool little toy cars and it's super simple. You know, Johnny, you just play uh, this card and you move this card this many spaces and this card that many spaces. And they'll very quickly uh, glom on to, you know, cutting each other off and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I, man, I really am impressed by this game and I, I never played it or heard of it <laughs> when I was a kid. Uh, I, I know they changed some of the uh, mechanics and things. But it's just a really fun game. It's just, you can break this out. And I played this with gamers as well, I meant to say. And uh, we just have a good time with it. It's a great kind of filler game. And it's got that, it's got a cutthroat feel to it. But you're not being super actually mean. You're like, this is the cards I got. I got to play this. You know, I got to cut you off. Sorry. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just works on all those kinds of levels. Uh, so I definitely recommend uh, folks check this one out. I think uh, you will have just a ton of fun with this game. The game is just, you know, you say, well, what's a fun game? Well, this just has, it's just fun. It comes out, it makes you think a little bit, not too much. And then you kind of always kind of evaluating what's happening, what to play, when to play this card. Do I hold this card now? Do I play it later? You know, what do I bet on now? Oh, what do I bet on again? We're betting again, huh? So, you know, it just kind of keeps you intrigued and entertained all throughout the course of the game. Okay, thanks.